Excellent question. I'm delighted to answer that. Uh, the young people now have never heard of St. Thomas as an authority. Uh, all that's gone because they, they're their own professors uh, don't teach them Thomas most of the time. So that great burden on St. Thomas of being the official authority is gone. The students are doing anything about that. So they come to him fresh and open. And when I taught in Santa Clara in California, University of Santa Clara, my students there were just amazed. They said, where has this man been? Nobody gives us any visions like this. The modern philosophers, one will say you can't know this, another will say you can't know that. What can you know is not clear. And they're all doing piecemeal work. Nobody gives us great visions like this. So they were just in, enthralled with this. Um, but it was because I presented St. Thomas in the great seminal ideas, not the heavy technical armature that he, uh, that he developed from Aristotle. He's very difficult to approach just on your own. You have to have somebody to guide you in and simplify and streamline from all the heavy technical terminology. Once that's done, the ideas can blossom. And um, I found students um, have just a very excited at this great unifying vision. And Sister Mary Clark, who's an old friend of mine, not a relative, she's been teaching for years, a great Thomist. She's now teaching, she was asked to teach down at NYU, the undergraduates, a course in medieval philosophy. They rarely have that, but they decided, well, they'd do it. And uh, she's teaching that in principally St. Thomas, and she says the students love it. There's some kind of a unity in your life this way. It makes sense, it argues, it, it's close enough to our experience. And a lot of these things we read now are so esoteric, you know, they, they can't make sense out. They were just, they just loved it and said we ought to have two classes a week rather than one. So that they, it's, it's like a thing, this, this idea of a unified vision is what is so tremendously lacking in our contemporary world. We have the pursuit of the part, that some have called the fascination of the part, as opposed to the vision of the whole. And we've gone in for the piecemeal specialization in the part. So people are in pieces. They got all about the parts, but um, but how does it all fit together into a whole? Nobody's going to tell them. They said, we don't do those. Some American philosophers said, we don't do that kind of big visions anymore. We do careful piecemeal work. But as somebody said, maybe Jefferson, when, um, uh, uh, when the, what is it now? The people perish when there is no vision. I would say vision of the whole. That's the thing that they miss and that they find in St. Thomas, a vision of the whole. That's why the book that I book is called The Universe as Journey. That's a single, tremendous, powerful image summing up, in a sense, the entire metaphysical vision of the universe according to St. Thomas. It's a, it's, a, it's a great image or archetypal image that people can understand. The universe as journey, the sense of all beings pour out, creatures pour out from God, the many from the one, they, they, as, if God, as though God throws them out in an adventure, in a journey, they go out first, and then as soon as they exist, he pulls them back towards himself by the pull of the good. And the pull of good, they're seeking each their finite good, but all those goods participate ultimately in the infinite. So the whole universe is then being trying to find its way back to God too, and man along the way as a, as a key point in that. In fact, man is, um, the material world couldn't get back to God without man because the material world doesn't have knowledge, self-consciousness, and, and love. So it can't know that it's on a journey and imitating God. So the human being, as a deep into matter, takes up, should take up the whole of matter, try to understand it, realize it's on a journey, refer it back to the source with acknowledgement and um, love and gratitude to the source. And then the material world comes back through the human, through man, through the human being, back to its source. But that's a tremendous image summing up the universe.